over six decades, the Bank of Industry, BOI, has been driving Nigeria's industrial development through financial and business support services. Bank of Industry is one organization that has kept their works with the Nigerian businesses. I have been able to expand my business from catering, event management, into water production. A single digit that Bank of Industry offers is the only solution to stay afloat. BOI Impact, now showing Tuesdays, 9.30 p.m. on TVC News. Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folarin. Hope you had a great weekend. Okay, it's a Monday, hit the ground running. Um, been a lot of holidays. Everybody is uh, well refreshed. Uh, let's start off this week then with the politics of, um, uh, well, uh, politics, is that the way to put it, of Kano State? Perhaps uh, I'm referring specifically here to the intention of the um, administration in Kano um, to uh, probe previous administrations uh, in the state. And um, the APC chairman in Kano, Al-Haji Abdullahi Abbas, has actually called on Governor Abba Yusuf not to limit his intended probe of uh, past administrations to the immediate past one. So let's talk about this. And um, our guest this morning is Honorable David Ogbole. Honorable David Ogbole is a commentator and a analyst of uh, public affairs. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you very much, Falarin. I've always admired you from afar. It's an honor to be in the studio with you. Today. Oh, you're too kind, sir. Thank you very much. My name is Yori Falarin. So you feel, feel free, please, to call me Yori. Thank you. Okay. So um, first of all, give me your overview of um, the situation. Usually, you don't have administrations, especially early ones, talking about probing their immediate past administration. But that doesn't mean very much. So give me the impression that you have um, about how this administration is going in Kano State. Thank you very much. As far as the Kano State um, situation is concerned, mm -hmm. there is a worrisome, toxic, and injurious trajectory oh dear. that the current governor, Abbas Yusuf, is uh, towing that uh, we have become concerned about, and we are joining all people who are development-minded to condemn and to also ask him to retrace his step. <coughs> um, uh, so uh, from the very first sentence, you've signaled that um, there is more to this probe than meets the eye. Of course. Uh, Talk to me a, about that. For a governor that came out of a turbulent election, and his victory was decided by the Supreme Court, he won just by the skin of his teeth. We are of the opinion that his first assignment on hitting the ground is to be able to see to it that bridges are built such that a polarized canoe mm -hmm. is now united. Okay. And all of the political wounds resulting from the election are also healed. Mm -hmm. But in, instead of doing that, he has uh, adopted a, an injurious situation where he is driving forward while looking backward. I know of a woman that uh, on a broad daylight, beautiful morning in Lagos, she came out of her house and then she was driving. She collided with a vehicle, no traffic. And, but she was truthful enough to admit that she was running late. So she decided to be doing her makeup, looking at the rearview mirror while she was driving forward. Oh. Of course, that resulted <laughs> in that accident. So uh, this what, what is a recipe for political and governance accident if a person hits the ground moving forward while he is looking backward. Looking backward in the sense of uh, instituting two judicial uh, you know, commissions to probe the past government of uh, His Excellency 
Omar Ganduje as governor of mm. the of uh, uh, um, Kano State. Mm -hmm. So that's now, the one of the things that one of the things that I can clear might help the viewers. You you've uh, started and you used um, the pronoun we. What we uh, see, what we are calling on. Um, so who is that we? Because I introduced you as a, a public affairs analyst. Beautiful. We is, uh, I'm speaking on behalf, like I said, of development-minded Nigerians okay. who believe that every government in question should be an improvement on the previous. They should build on the successes of the previous. And I also speak as somebody who has, you know, gone through the social life of Kanu mm -hmm. as an individual living in uh, Sabungari. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I have integrated within the Hausa community. I speak Hausa very well. And I'm concerned about the development of Kanu State. That is why I mentioned the word we. And we in the sense that the collectivity of we as Nigerians must be emphasized in every new climb of governance. Because an injury done to one side of Nigeria is an injury done to all. We are a collective body, just one body as a nation. So we must be concerned about what happens in any sector of the same body. That's the essence of the word we. As you said, it's been quite turbulent politically in Kano. In fact, the incumbent uh, governor now, um, thank God for the Supreme Court, uh, he might well not have been in office because that was not the way uh, things were before. Uh, talking about um, Governor Abba Yusuf. So that turbulence one understands, and also the turbulence between uh, the chairman of his party uh, and, you know, the chairman of the ruling APC, the nationally ruling APC, is also in there. Uh, but, but do you think uh, that this is being brought to bear? Because they would say that these are neutral indices. If they were not mere... Uh, if they were, if they didn't have the merit, the Supreme Court wouldn't have given them uh, the position that they have to now impute into that mm -hmm. um, ulterior yeah. motives when they say they now want to uh, begin to look at what has happened in the past. And besides, there are those probably who will be saying that, um, well, there might be a bit of a pot calling a kettle black in all of this. Uh, go, go explore all that whole area. If you, you see, will. he is the only governor in Nigeria that in the post-election election litigations was sacked by the two lower courts. It took the magnanimity, let me use that word, and I don't want to explain further, of the Supreme Court to grant him victory. No, no, no. You the know? word is a very difficult word to use in the <laughs> present context. The Supreme Court does not deal in magnanimity. You see, it deals in facts of law. Yes, we, we deal in fact. Man makes the law. The law was not made for man. Therefore, in sane climes that Nigeria is becoming, you know, justice is usually uh, um, a, a very dynamic issue. It's a fluid issue yes. in the sense that there are situations where justice is given not for the immediate situation, mm -hmm. but for a greater good of a particular people or, com or community. Because to give justice to a small quarter at the expense of... Uh, a national interest mm -hmm. is something that is, does not spell wisdom at all. But my, so. my worry is that every primary school student will probably know of the law that the Supreme Court operates on the principle of merit. I agree. So I agree. So if the Supreme Court put the governor in there, it must have looked at it from a position of law and decided that Abba Yusuf has merits. The Supreme Court has given him judgment. So we shouldn't be looking backwards, like I said. It is to move forward. So we are talking about the issues of moving forward now. Okay. We are not putting, bringing to question the validity of the Supreme Court judgment. A apart yeah, from when you use the know, word so, magnanimity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's no why I, that is why I begged not to be asked to explain <laughs> the matter further. <laughs> you know? Okay, let, so we don't let, let, since we've agreed on that, pieces, you know? that so, let's, let's, let's deal yeah. with the principle of Merit. The principle of merit. Mm -hmm. So he is the governor of By Kano merit, State. according to the Supreme according Court. According to the Supreme Court. Verdict, exactly. That upturned the verdicts of the two lower courts. Okay, yeah, that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So now where, um, in your considered view, is the danger here, if indeed there is anything like that? Yes, we believe that whatever intention a governor takes or, or, or has mm -hmm. must be proven to be holistic and, okay. and in the interest of a larger good of the people that he has been elected to govern. In this case, the people of Kano State. In this state, the, in this case, the people of Kano State. So the 
point actually is that to show the transparency of these uh, probe actions that he has embarked upon, mm -hmm. number one, the, judicial the probe, constitution right? of the judicial commissions of, themselves is okay. the first point port of call. Okay. In the sense that how do we expect transparency when a major bulk of the movers and influencers that have been you know, appointed into this judicial commission are members of the NNPP? So that will be a case of a cockroach coming before judgment at the table of hands. There is no way a cockroach can find justice when the hen is the head of the commission. So we are questioning the composition, first of all. So to show transparency, there should be neutrality in the composition. That's the first one. And then number two, to all show, uh, show some holistic intentions to do the right thing, we are advising that he extends the probe net mm -hmm. beyond just the previous administration mm -hmm. to other administrations before uh, uh, His Excellency Omar Abdullahi Ganduje. For instance, Kwankwesto, his benefactor, Engineer Rabi Kwankwesto, was governor of Kadu State from 1999 to 2003. He also came back again after his stint at the national level, you know, to be governor 2011 to 2015. And under the government of Kwankwesto, the current governor, Abbas Yusuf, was commissioner for works, housing, and transport. So as commissioner for works, housing, and transport, he is private to all that happened within this administration. For him to be holistic, for him to be okay. transparent, okay. he should extend the probe. But there is one thing. Uh, and where, 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 where it is important, the... the he the, will not the, dare we, we, to extend the probe. You just mentioned that, that he was commissioner will, for works. And will, a road, a major road, is a key part of all of this. That will implicate both him and his benefactor. In the sense that under his watch... Okay. Let me spell out. The three mandate of the, of the Judicial Committee was, number one, misappropriation of public properties, mm -hmm. number two, political violence, and number three, missing persons. Okay, to talk about misappropriation of political uh, 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 government or public properties, under his watch as commissioner for works, housing, and transport, a bulk of houses and public properties were sold or given as gifts to families and friends right under his watch. That is so the chairman, show, uh, chairman Kwakwansu. No, oh. I'm talking about the present governor. Okay, he okay. He was commissioner for works, housing, and transport under Kwankwansu when these, you know, atrocities were committed. Okay, when Kwankwansu was governor. Yes, when Kwankwansu was governor, he was commissioner under Kwankwansu. So, to extend the probe backwards will justify, it will present a transparent ground for him to be able to, to look forward. So, if at all you decide to look back, please look back further enough so that we can be able to see the, the, the sincerity of your intentions. And then you are talking about road. Under the administration of Kwankwesu, five kilometer roads were awarded to the 44 local governments of Kano State. And all of them, funds were allocated to it. But the, the, the execution of those, those, those roads is something we never saw. They are still in question till today. So what happened to those ones? In case he is blinded by loyalty and he cannot see the reason or the facts under Kwankwesu administration that were around the, the extension of the probe there, we are willing to help him with facts. That is one of it. And then number two, Kwankwesu's presidential campaign in Lagos. You know, every of the local governments in Kano State 44 specifically were mandated to donate 700 million each. That amounted to billions of Naira. These are public resources that a man has used to build a red cap militia, you know, that is bamboozling and bullying everybody into political offices today. All of those matters should be brought to bear. A so such light should be thrown this, on this, them. This really sheds light on your statement yeah. of um, um, needing to be more, uh, you, you, quite frankly, you don't look at the, um, you, you don't see um, that this is uh, going to be an unbiased exercise. Beautiful, beautiful. Especially, that's uh, our concern. Uh, okay, that's your concern. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling and, uh, me. Good morning to your guest. Yes. Uncle Yori, it's not today we knew that uh, Governor Abba Yusuf didn't come for governor. He came for vengeance. Remember, from day one, he started demolishing the structures built by uh, his predecessor. 
I wonder why he did not go to the multi-level bridges at the roundabout that Yandu uh, J did to demolish it. And this is a governor that going by what the law says, he shouldn't even be a governor, if not for the generosity of the Supreme Court. How do you uh, uh, get votes with ballot, that, ballot papers that are not valid? That one is not as serious as the one in Bayesa that was cancelled as the governor. And he's here, so, uh, you know, trying to prove another person. What kind of proof is this one that is so specific on one person? And by the way, the nature of the offense is not that which a governor can prove. It is that which the EFCC alone can prove as a crime. Has he done that? And like his party or the APC party is saying, let him extend it to the previous administration before Gandhi and see whether he himself will not get indicted. We should look at issues in a way to show that you, are, you have come to work, not to come and victimize people. I wasn't particularly happy when the Supreme Court did in that judgment. You know, I called this program and I expressed my view. But from the look of things, I thought with that judgment, they would turn a new leaf. But see what is he doing? For 11 months or 10, 11 months now, most political watchers have not seen any significant uh, governance delivery in kind of state. When other people like uh, Peter Mba, uh, Alex Oti, the Lagos and all the rest, they are showing results already. He is showing which one thing. I don't understand this kind of uh, uh, policy in Kano. It's very bad. Oh. If I were uh, uh, a candidate, I would go to court and quash this thing and ask the court to force him to attend the probe, even if she's qualified to probe it. Okay. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I see that you were agreeing with a lot that was being said. Yes, I was there. agreeing because the moment he hit the ground, the, um, very viable economic structures on ground, Daula Hotel, even a mosque, shops of people were demolished. And when we took a probe into it, we discovered that there were properties belonging to his perceived political enemies. So that's nothing but witch hunting. That's vendetta. That's why I used the word injurious, you know, at the beginning. In an already strained economic, economically strained canoe, we are of the opinion that as he hits the ground, like I said earlier, after he unites the polarized canoe that came out of that turbulent election and he makes a move to heal the political wounds, he should now begin to cushion the economic hardships of the people of Kano. Rather, he is adding to it. So, for you to demolish a mosque, for you to demolish structures, you are, you know, stalking some economic and religious fires within which, Kano, which will not help your administration to grow. Okay. So, um, those are the issues that we're concerned about. Uh, Reverend Dominic, good morning, sir. Good morning, Chipiori. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Good morning to your guests. Yes. I beg to defer, Chief Yori, from your guest and my friend, George. Yori is good in office, and the governor is doing well. You know the reason? He's laying a right precedent. He's probing somebody from now to four years to eight years. He will leave office. Somebody will probe him. We must have accountability in our office. I guess Mr. President Tinibu agree with me. Look at what is happening in CBS. Look at what is happening in the Ministry of uh, Rubetoria Affairs. Can we close our eyes to this kind of billions we have thrown away? And that's why there's no progress in Nigeria. Yori, the man left office in America is going around to the Trump in all jobs. Jacob Zuma has gone to prison. It is time we begin to probe our government. When you do that, you will sit right. So that after your own stewardship, somebody will probe you. We must look back. Our nation is not that right in accountability. I'm not supporting the man in Kano. I know he does some witch hunt what he's doing. But I'm trying to say you want to turn governors around in Nigeria for accountability. For accountability. I told him, Mr. President, I begged him, you should also open the book of an NPC. If we open the book of an NPC in Nigeria, so, I mean, the club will change. We must find a way for accountability. That's what I'm trying to say. The man, what he's doing in Kano is good. After he, he probed his last government, somebody will probe him tomorrow. So maybe somebody wants to probe him tomorrow, we'll say why. Because I probed somebody. There must be accountability. My Bible says, Jesus gave his disciples.
disciples, a king gives disciples some money for investment. He came back for accountability. Without accountability, there's no good governance. What I do wrongly or rightly, my what I'm trying to say is that it is good. After he probed his government, and that person who probed him, that is right. God bless Nigeria. Thank you, uh, Reverend, for calling in. Now, I, okay. I think you, you, let, you, let you me put react. Out, you you let me understand react to what he's saying. He said he's not necessarily supporting uh, one or the other, but that the principle mm. of uh, accountability mm. uh, is, what, see, it, is why he's disagreeing. It must never appear that we are against the judicial commissions that have been set up by Abbas Yusuf to probe you know, his predecessor. We are not against that. You know, the crux of this is to say, extend your probe backward enough. Extend it. Don't be particular on a person. So your particularity is what is giving the suspicion that you are out on a vendetta. You have been, you have served under a government that also governed Kanu. If you will be holistic at all, why don't you extend the net of the probe backward enough? To so the administration he served in so, previously. So, Reverend Dominic, it is a good thing to probe, but it is a better thing to probe holistically. So, better is an advancement of good. So, it's a better thing to go backward enough so that your probe can be holistic. You cannot begin to, to talk about the, the fortunes of Kanu, all premised on the previous administration, when Kanu especially the return to democracy, has had, you know, consistent, you know, turnover of power from 1999 to date. So why don't you extend backwards? We're not even saying go back to 1999. Just go back to 2011 to 2015 also. It will give you a beautiful spectrum or a holistic view of the affairs of Kano in terms of the financial and the economic also, so that your probe can be more incisive and the results can be more beneficial. So go backward enough. That's all we're saying. All right. We're not saying don't probe. We're simply saying probe well. Now, the, uh, is there any opportunity, as someone has suggested, to seek to not quash the whole thing because of fear or anything, but based on these things that you are talking about, that, you know, need, need, these, need these probes really stand? Is there any room? Um, um, is there any room for that? But before we go there, uh, somebody called in from Abuja, but I didn't hear. Okay. Stephen, Stephen in Abuja. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Good morning, Good morning sir. Please go go ahead. Celebration. Go ahead. You're on air All now. Right. All right. Good morning, um, Honorable Pastor David Bale, who happens to be one of my mentors in Benue State. Then. Um, it's a good program this morning, and um, the topic is quite excelling. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes, hear you. We can hear you. Okay. All right. Um, I think I stand with um, what um, the public analyst is saying over there. And um, out of Reverend Dominic's um, conceptual analysis, he seems not to understand where he's coming from. But I think I'd better to stand with him. And it's clear enough he has explained to Reverend Dominic. But let me say this. One of the principal problems we're having in Nigeria today, I'm coming in a general, I'm generalizing right now in Nigeria. Politics is not a matter of division. Politics should be a matter of dialogue, communication, information, promotion, and extending dividends of democracy. By the time the governors and senators reps begin to see themselves that, look, we are coming together for a common cause, development, progress, sustainability, and then security. The issue of Kano, just my advice, what I want to bring into this bear now, there are a few states in Nigeria, if anything goes wrong in one of those states, Nigeria will go down. Kano is one of them. And we must not jeopardize that state based on political differences to affect development. If you go to the south, Port Harcourt is one of them. You can see the turbulence politically that is going on. It's going to affect Nigeria. So what am I saying? Standing with the public analysts over there, if you want to extend, the major point I picked from um, uh, Pastor Honorable Dave Ubala there is this. You might be distracted looking backward instead of going forward. So that is very key for Abba Yusuf, His Excellency. So my take is this. 
let this governor, not just can see, the whole governor, look forward, drop whatever you have. Being in power, it is gift from God. It is power from God, not power from men. So let these governors put the steps together, just like the, His Excellency um, Bart. The president of the federation have called all the governors and said, look, come, work together, come as unit, be unified as a governor, as a team, and change the narrative of poverty in the country. So let these governors come together. Forget what has happened. Let them look forward and be futuristic so that Nigeria will be a better place for all. Thank you, and God bless your um, analysts in the studio. God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Thank you very much, uh, mm. Stephen, for uh, that particular uh, contribution. Mm. Uh, in other words, he's looking for a path that is really non-partisan, uh, uh, that focuses on the principles of development. Uh, now, how much room for that do you see in Kano? And I, 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 I'm delighted that Stephen generalized it. He even took it away from Kano and was speaking of Quite frankly, states where you can't afford, you know, to have uh, up crisis. people mm. and up a crisis uh, in there. Um, how much room do you think exists for um, his classic uh, position? You see, upon emergence, because it's about dialogue, it's about not being bitter. Uh, you know, you see, it's important to note that. By the time the dust settled down, as far as the Supreme Court matter was concerned, and the 165,000 votes, you know, were restored back to Abbas Yusuf, he came up with a total vote of a million and nineteen thousand, you know, votes, as against um, Gauna mm -hmm. of the APC with 890,000 votes. So the margin between them was 123,000. So if those 165,000 votes were not restored by the Supreme Court, Abbas Yusuf will not be governor today. He will not be governor today. Can, can I hold you there, please? Because I'm going to bring you back to okay. it. I don't want to lose Edmund, okay. who has called in from okay. Enugu. Good okay. morning, Edmund. Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Yuri, good morning. Thank you for calling in. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, yes, I want to participate in discussion going on right now. Sure, go ahead. Um, let me first of all, Commend your guest. Commend your guest for um, all he's been saying about the about what is happening in Canada. As a matter of fact, your your, your guest did say that um, it was as a result of the generosity of the Supreme Court that uh, Abba Yusuf is now the, the governor. I quite agree with it. Mr. George said that uh, it was as a result of the the the. I've forgotten the exact word they used. I think one used oh. magnanimity, the other used generosity. generosity. Jo Stephen used generosity, yes, I used magnanimity. Yeah, same word, same point. Uh, magnanimity. Hmm. Let me add to the two phrases the two speakers used. Let me say benevolence <laughs> of the Supreme Court. <laughs> benevolence of the Supreme Court. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is the judgment that I've never agreed with the Supreme Court. Supreme Court couldn't have done that, but for the exigency of the volatility of Kano, that was why Supreme Court had to do what they did. But that shouldn't serve as a precedent for other litigations in future political contestations. Secondly, um, I, I don't want to use the word excellency for the governor, because there's nothing excellent in him. That's not excellent in him. That's excellency. We should know how we use that. that well, it, it's a courtesy. It's a courtesy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. That thing is already, blow, it was already blowing their, their, their head. Excellency. As if nothing, nothing bad can come out of them. Anyway, that's by the way. Um, yes, anyway, um, the, new, the governor of Kano State should trade carefully. He should tread carefully. He's on a mission of vendetta and not mission of governance. And uh, the Kwan Kwan show himself to be very careful if he has that ambition of becoming president of this country. With the way he's going on Kano on, on, um, kind of issue, it may be I'm not a, I'm not a fan of uh, Ganduje. I'm not a fan of his. 
But what the current governor is doing in Kano State should be should be condemned. If he's interested in 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 improving, there's something wrong with improving past administrations. But let him start from where from the man that made it possible for him to be the governor today. All so right then. From, but we are Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, I, I, at this point, so that there are fewer interruptions, yes. just hold the point you wanted to make. Go I'll on. go on a quick break, be right back, and then you will not be interrupted. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this happen? We will be right there. At TVC News, we follow the big and major news, gathering the facts, witnessing the outcome. I am here live for the aftermath of the approval of the new national minimum wage. We are TV station of the year, not just for breaking news, but for being first, fair and accurate. TVC News, first with breaking news. Welcome back. And uh, well, before I go any further, so I don't forget, uh, did I get it right? Is, did you say Chuku Uandu is on the line? Is that what you. Is, is Chuku Uandu on the line? Yeah. Chuku on the line. Okay. What, what's your name? Chuku Mawu. Okay. Go, go right ahead. I didn't hear it. You slurred it, but welcome. Uh, my name is Chuku Mawu. Chuku Mawu. Okay. Chuku Wagu. Chuku Wagu. Okay. I'm calling from, yeah, uh, from Abakaliki in Ebony State. Okay, then. Go ahead quickly, please. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay. My, my point is this. Uh, yeah, my point is this. In this case, there must be a certain point. There is nothing wrong about probing the past administration. And you don't expect him to go and jump to start with one person. He must start with his immediate predecessor. Then before going to Kwankwaso. And he, he mustn't model up the whole thing. He, he must start from somewhere. The issue is that the analyst has interest. When you are biased, you must not see anything good about what someone is doing. Because already you have interest. And uh, since you have interest, you don't supposed to be a judge in your own case. You are talking about demolition when you flee more hardship. What of the demolition going on in Lagos State? Is it not speaking hardship? You are talking about probing that you don't supposed to prove that the minister please what of the probing in the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and the probing in the CBS. So this, they must be probing for good governance. When you probe somebody, the next person that will succeed will probe you. When you know that you must speak and uh, rule according to the rules according to the constitution. You mustn't be taking away something that doesn't belong to you or taking away public funds. Okay. Thank you very much for calling in Chubu. Points taken. Uh, added Point to it. Taken. Yes. So let's continue with the discussion. Yes. Um, I, I interrupted you before we went on break. Yeah. And um, Chuku came Okay. In. I, I was trying to, to draw an inference from the statistics of the election, the 2023 mm -hmm. election in Kano State. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but let, let me rewind a little bit. Um, the total votes he scored when the 165,000 votes were restored to him was a, a million and 19,000 votes as against a governor. Idris, who scored uh, 890,000 votes. Like I said earlier, if the 165,000 was not restored back to him, he will not be governor today. So from the four, slightly over 5 million people in Canada that registered to vote, we had like a 43% turnout. So that left the, uh, the entire team around slightly just over 2 million of the people that voted. 
And if close to a million voted APC, and then a million plus voted you, you can see how polarized you know, Kano is now. So the moment you became governor, your party became irrelevant, and governance should take center stage, and politics should begin to fade backwards. But to embark on this mission is a sign that you are not letting go of the fights and the fireworks of politics. Politics is still continuing almost a year after your election or your assumption of office, instead of governance taking center stage. These are our concerns. Okay, governance and development. Governance and development, governance and its attendant development okay. should take center stage. Mm. Politics should begin to take backstage. Okay, that's the point. So yeah. that's the point we are making. So that leaves a lot of the people on ground who are enthusiasts and followers and, and members of one other political party or the other to say, oh, so is politics still going on? So let's still ha hold our swords under the emblem of APC, PDP, you know, uh, NNPP and so on. So the swords are still up. The swords should have been shifted by now. And then everybody united, you know, in, in a cohesive work unit to move Kano forward. What, in so, your opinion, you know, um, uh, is responsible for this? Because um, it, it's such a logical position. Yeah. I would be very, very surprised if His Excellency Governor Abba Yusuf was not aware uh, of the uh, rightness of your position. So the next thing to think about is, look, uh, loyalty to, you know, whatever. I mean, well, the, don't get me wrong. It has been discussed frequently. Godfatherism, for lack of a better word, is sort of a necessary... Um, it is like it's necessary in Nigerian politics. What, to what extent do you think that is playing into this? Because the governor, Governor Abbas on his own, any governor on his own might see it one particular way. Uh, but are there, is there the further complication of godfathers sort of um, factoring in to the very, very delicate um, equations on the ground? You see... Extend it beyond politics. In every endeavor of life, after God the Father, you need Godfathers. Because men are always the platform and method by which a new generation can be raised so that there can be continuity of any good that is happening in society. So, Godfathers are needed in every sphere. Okay. If you're a preacher, you need a pastor over you. If you're an imam, you need a senior imam over you. If you're a general, there should be an ex-general who is mentoring you. So Godfatherism is a necessary indice as far as the equation of success and progress is so concerned. So it's not, it's not an evil the way some people it's make it. It's not an evil. The, the machinery of Godfatherism is puritanical. It's not an evil thing. It is the drivers of that machinery per time mm -hmm. that can be good or evil. Just mm -hmm. like money does not have a conscience. Mm -hmm. It takes on the conscience of the person holding it per time. Okay. So Godfatherism, like I said, is an essential thing. But there are two kinds of Godfathers, the mentors and the tormentors. Who are the mentors? They are the ones who have foresight, they are vision, they are people oriented, they are community and society oriented, and they develop people to be able to, you know, follow a positive trajectory and build on the foundations that they have laid for common good. So Those are, are mentors. Are godfathers then, at play in Kano? Then the tormentors are the toxic godfathers who use their protégés, you know, to, 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 to build castles for themselves. Okay. To build a name for themselves. So, when you come to the Kano uh, factor, mm. you will see the clear hand. It's not even a hidden hand. Uh, people had a proverb that when you see an insect dancing on top of the water, somebody beneath is, is playing the drums. In this case, the drums are open and the hands playing them are open. And who is the drummer playing this drum? The benefactor of uh, Abbas Yusuf, in the person of engineer Rabiu Kwankweso, he has come out you know, time without number to criticize this current administration and then to call. He is the one who is reading out the manifesto for the governor. So we wonder, who is the governor? Is Abbas Yusuf's tenor, Kwan Kwaso's third term, or Abbas Yusuf is mm -hmm. the governor of Kano State? Those are the things we are wondering. So okay. the, the influence of this godfather, which we are seeing to be a toxic one, he is a tormentor instead of a mentor is playing very, very obviously as far as Kano politics is concerned. Okay, let me hold that for a while. We might want to return to it or not. Uh, but Peter in Edo State has called in. Good morning, Peter. Yes, uh, good morning, Okuyori. Good morning, sir. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, okay, I would love to make uh, my own contribution to this wonderful topic that is being discussed this morning on your program. Yes, you're very welcome. Go ahead. 
Okay. Uh, you see, the the issue on ground is very vital to the development of this country, and it is one of the bane of progress in this country. What your your guest is trying to say indirectly is that Nigeria is a farm where everybody come and takes their own as they so so wish, and once the person once uh, the person leaves. Nobody should bother about what he or she has done. You should just go. <laughs> Come and take your own share and go. And that is not how a country develops. That has been the issue with Nigeria. When a governor or, or a leaves office and is a successor wants to look into the books, he starts to shout. Why? Why? The uh, so person did, did, did it. No, we should be looking for accountability. We, we saw some, some of the things that uh, 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 Ganduje did in, in Kano, how he stopped God into his pocket. I'm not going not, not to go into, into that. But the issue is that we should do test the country or the notion that Nigeria uh, is, is, is a national farm. So it's a national thing. Everybody comes, cuts his cake with that capability and goes like that. Then the next person comes, he's able to close his eyes to what he's done before and, and uh, continue taking his own cake. No. So in that case now, you are telling, you are telling uh, uh, the current governor now, Sani, to also take his own share of the cake and leave, that nobody will, will, will be to him. So to me, I don't think that that, that is how it should be wrong. That, 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 that's not nice. So wait, wait a minute. Nice. Let, let me get you clear, Peter, if I may. Um, are, are, you, are you for the probe or, or not? I am for the probe. You are for the probe? Yes. And, 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 and for it to be extended... Uh, further backwards in order to be seen as more equitable? Well, uh, Ganduje was there before Sami. Why did, did he bother to do the probe of his, of his predecessor before, before that? Okay. So you if see. this, this governor has come now and said, okay, I want to probe this first, mm -hmm. then fine, let him start. Because he, he depends on, on him. He's the one doing the probe. So he sets the, the, the gate of the probe. The scope of the proof, but the bottom line is that we shouldn't spend have that perception that Nigeria is a farm, is a national thing that everybody anybody comes and takes his own share. All right. That fear of accountability, and that is. What okay. Um. <laughs> well, there you uh, have uh, it. Uh, Thank you very much, Peter. Let, let Let me just quickly correct a notion. The metaphor you use is not a, an appropriate metaphor of Nigeria and be, Nigeria being a farm and people come take their share and go. I see Nigeria rather as a tree planted, and each successive administration should water and manure, not cut branches and go. It's, let's, let's have a contributory approach to Nigeria. Let's have an investor's approach to Nigeria, not a consumer's approach that comes to take and go, but comes to plant or to water what has been planted before. OK, that having said, uh, having said that, we are, we are emphasizing that um, if you see in this matter of the probe, there is no move so far by Abdullah Eganduje to thwart mm -mm. this probe. Mm. If there are moves, he is now filing a motion in this court to stop the probe and so on, you would have suspected that he has a lot to hide. When you talk about the case of the dollar, like somebody said earlier, those are matters that the Attorney General of the Federation and EFCC has the jurisdiction to be able to handle. As I speak to you right now, in two days' time, which is 17th of this April, the matter is coming up in the High Court. So he has not made any move at all to quash, to thwart, or to even slow down this matter as a sign that he is open, you know, to being probed. So we are simply saying if somebody is open to being probed, we are not on a crusade to say, Abba, don't probe. Mm. Our crusade is simply saying, Abba, if you will probe, please probe long enough. Here he mentioned something. When Ganduje came, Ganduje did not make any move to probe Kwankwaso, who was his predecessor, because he believed that having taken the reins of control or the reins of power or leadership in Kanu, he should be driving forward and not looking backward. So we are simply saying if experienced people like this have laid a precedence, the young Abba Yusuf should not display political exuberance or, or delayed adolescence in trying to look back. Go forward. That is what we're saying. But if you will look back at all, please look back far enough so you can see well to be okay. able to prove. And That's all our point. And uh, you know, that was why I was wondering the part that you thought um, 
godfathers because clearly Kwan Kwanso is the godfather of uh, Governor Yusuf. Abba Yusuf. You know, that, that is clear. Um, and, you know, so it really, be, it, it goes above him if you want. You know, it goes really above him. To, above Yusuf, yes. Yes, it, it sort of above his head. You've got to have the, you know, people like uh, Kwan Kwanso himself on the same page mm. with progress and development in Kano State. Mm. Now, clearly, from Kwan Kwanso's point of view, this is progress and development. He has always put his own side of the story next to the Gandoji story, story mm. as you know. He's never been on all fours with him. So th this is why, and people have warned that you have to be very, very careful about Kano. You have to be very, very careful. There are, there, were, there are states, every state is important, but then there are states where if you rock the boat unnecessarily, uh, the ripples might you know, expand far beyond the very confines of Kano. Mm. So what, 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 uh, what, what, what room do we have? Uh, what, what, what other ideas beyond what you are doing now calling on common sense to prevail. You know, common sense and political sense don't often coincide. Two things quickly. Kwan Kwaso, as the leader of NNPP, is grappling with a lot of issues within his party right now. The, 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 the matter of parallel conventions that happened recently, where the national leaders were elected, I think Somebody who is coming up to fix a city should be able to, number one, show us an example by fixing his own house first. If you fence your house, then we can have the, 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 the trust in you that you can fence, you know, our village. So if an imbroglio is on within NNPP, two conventions held, two parallel, you know, leadership emerged, one is summoning Abba Yusuf now to say why did he identify with those so-and-so convention where they had said at the national working level of NNPP that it was illegal for him to identify with a particular convention. So we're simply saying whatever is happening within NNPP, which is the division and the chaos, Kwan Kwaso should not engineer Abba to carry on that into the politics of Kanu. Okay, okay. That okay. is all okay. we are saying. Mm. Be a good mentor. Be a, 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 a positive development-minded leader that you order the step of your younger ones in the right direction. I will, I will leave it. I will, I will just drop a thought here that you, if you feel that we can expand on, we should expand on. If there should be a university at all for Godfatherism in Nigeria, I think one man qualifies to be appointed unanimously as the chancellor of that university. I'm talking of no other person but His Excellency Asiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu, GCFR. And I have my reasons for saying that. Okay. He had the same privileges Kwan Kwaso had in 1999 to govern Lagos State. And then, number one, he became a beautiful judge of talents. He brought young people under his wings, mentored them. Beyond indigenship of Lagos State, they were indigents of other southwestern states, but he brought them magnanimously, selflessly, sacrificially. He tutored them. And all the people he tutored have become either political giants or notable technocrats in business today who are contributing meaningfully to the economy of Nigeria in various spheres. He raised a beautiful vice president of Nigeria. Various ministers have come, have come from under him. And today, he is president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You can see, number one, he has foresight. At the time, he judges good the talent. benefit of Lagos State. Beautiful. At the time. So, I am saying this because vis-a-vis at, -vis, at the time, Kwan Kwaso has the ambition to lead Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Just like his, mm -hmm. his, uh, his, his uh, mate, 1999, as governor of Lagos State, had ambition to lead Nigeria. This is the kind of trajectory you follow, to be okay. able to lay a track record of okay. transparency and fairness. Let me apologize and yeah. thank uh, Daniel in Oshogbo, who has held on for quite a long time. Good morning to you. Thank you for holding on. Daniel? Okay. Yes? Daniel in Oshogbo, go ahead now, please. I'm here. Go ahead, please. Hello? Go ahead now, Daniel. Our, our problem here is, uh, is the question of immunity. 
Okay. Is that what you wanted to say, Daniel? I'm not concluded. Oh, yeah, please. Go ahead. Quickly. There must, there must be the, the, the legislature to be able to review the issue of uh, immunity that they are enjoying. If they are there and they commit crime, the crime of stealing public funds, okay. they, should, they, should, they should be prosecuted. It okay. It's possible to try them. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, I get the point you are making. I really get the point you are making. Thank you very much for calling in. And um, yes, he was talking about immunity, mm. and of course there are implications in what he said vis-a-vis. Uh, -vis so let's go know, on with our thoughts. Then. Yes, but very, very briefly because we've we've used up all our time. It's one of those kind of dynamic subjects. And have you noticed something interesting? Not a single person has called in from Kano State. Mm. Sort of curious, isn't it? Mm. You know. Uh, people have called in from all over the place, but um, uh, please continue. I would have thought that we'd get a deluge of calls from Kano State. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking as well, because uh, nobody has been disenfranchised as far as the technological reach mm -hmm. of TDC no, is no, concerned. No, no, so there are viewers but, from Kano right yes, now. There yes. are viewers from all over the world. That's right. Uh, because of the reach of TDC. Yes. So whoever calls or whoever does not call, I think we should leave their sentiments to in them. In them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so in conclusion now, I, you've made the point very clearly that you, 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 as a, as an analyst, as a commentator, uh, indeed, as a non-member of NNPP, are not against the principle of probe. That's not what you're saying. You are saying that that probe should be seen to be fair. Let equity be brought to bear. Let's go it. Let's go far, uh, far enough back to include those that need to be included if this is not to be seen as a witch hunt. That is the objective. Everything we've been saying in various words boils down to this same matter. And uh, to, for Abba Yusuf to show transparency, to show the, 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 the holistic intentions of, of governing a united Kanu, yeah. prospering the fortunes of Kanu, yeah. he should simply go back long enough. And if he goes back long enough and he finds anybody, even his benefactor, and even himself, under his watch as commissioner for works, let them face housing. Them. Let, let them, them be able face. to face this matter. matter. We are simply saying the last eight years is enough. It's, it's not enough to establish the matters of the fortunes of Kano going forward. Okay. So he should be able to look backward. Governance is a continuum. We're going to have one to administration there. leaves, you know, and the other comes and continues with the liabilities and assets of government. We're so going go back long enough, We're going to have and then to ensure there. that your probe is holistic and of good intention, okay. not a witch hunt. Not a vendetta. Thank you very much, Honorable Pastor David uh, Ogbole. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's been you, you put across these points, uh, you know, very articulate, very articulately, and everybody understands what we're talking about. So we're going to have to Thank leave you it very there. Much for our, uh, for my pleasure. Me. We're going to have to leave it there. That's our program today. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folaring. Bye bye for now. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dettol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Today, there are many complex, boring, expensive, and useless exercise machines in the market. Or you pay over 400,000 naira a year for gym membership and never go. ShopX TV is proud to introduce Total Crunch Evolution, the compact, versatile fitness solution that is perfect for you. With Total Crunch, you get a complete fitness workout in one machine. Say goodbye to ineffective and complicated exercise machines. Now you have the power to transform your fitness journey and get the body you have always wanted right in the comfort of your own home. 
Total Crunch is the efficient and effective way to build muscle, tone, and tighten your legs, shape your back and pectorals, while strengthening your core and defining your abs. Now that's totally effective to get the body you want. With Total Crunch, your whole body works out at the same time. Only Total Crunch can put your whole body in motion as you burn calories and lose weight. Just one fitness routine a week will achieve serious results in four weeks. Total Crunch Evolution has enhanced the way I work out and the results I achieve. It's not just a fitness equipment, it's a life changer. This versatile time-saving machine is perfect for anyone looking to lose weight or stay in shape. Trust me, this is the game changer you've been waiting for. With my busy schedule, Finding time to work out and stay in shape has always been a challenge until I discovered the Total Crunch Evolution. It's a lifesaver. Traditional exercise equipment is large, complex, takes up so much space in your home, and you could be paying up to 400,000 Naira for annual gym fees. Get the Total Crunch Evolution, the two-in-one fitness solution to save the cost and transform your body from the convenience of your home. Similar equipment costs 300,000 Naira, but you can get the Total Crunch Evolution for not 300,000 Naira, not even 200,000 Naira. Order right now and get your Total Crunch Evolution for just 179,950 Naira only. And that's not all. You can get our Total Crunch Evolution in two easy payments of 89,975 Naira. That's right. Pay twice to get your Total Crunch. And remember, if you order now, you get the Total Crunch Evolution delivered to you for free anywhere you are in Nigeria. And it comes with a ShopEx 30-day money-back guarantee. Call the number on your screen now or scan the code to place your order now. But hurry, limited stock available. The proceeding is a paid presentation brought to you by ShopEx TV. And welcome to TVC Midday News. We are staying with the arrest of suspected Yoruba Nation agitators as your, your police command is set to parade the suspects who are said to have invaded the Oyo State Secretariat in Agodi Ibadan a few days ago. They will be paraded at the Oyo State Police Headquarters in Eleyele alongside the exhibits that were recovered from them. Items recovered from the suspects include guns, live cartridges, cutlasses, paraphernalia of various offices with Yoruba Nation inscriptions, flags carrying Yoruba Nation inscription, among others. We'll bring you more on this report in our subsequent bulletins as our correspondent, Elido Yewoli, who is in Oyo, would be at the police headquarters bringing us updates. 14th of April 2014 is a day never to be forgotten by Nigerians, especially parents of the remaining girls abducted from their dormitory at Government Girls College, Chibok in Borno State. Ten years down the line, there is still growing advocacy and activism to power pressure on relevant authorities to bring back the girls. TVC News senior reporter Jesse Tafida takes a look at how much government efforts to rescue those in captivity has yielded. April 14, 2014, a day that put Chibok, a rural community of Borno State, on the global map, but for the wrong reason. More than 250 girls were forcefully taken from their dormitory by the dreaded Boko Haram terrorists, an extremist group whose insurgency has killed thousands of civilians and also caused multidimensional devastation 
which the World Bank estimate will cost $6.2 billion. 57 of the kidnapped schoolgirls reportedly escaped almost immediately after their capture. The dreaded terrorist group claimed responsibility for the abduction in a video released by Abubakar Shekhel, who led Boko Haram before he was killed by the Nigerian army offensive. Who are we? Who are we? As the Chibok girl's abduction stole global attention, pressure started to pile on the federal government and Nigeria's military. During that period, hopes were raised, but later dashed as the girls remained in captivity. Like millions of people across the globe, my husband and I are outraged and heartbroken over the kidnapping of more than 200 Nigerian girls from their school dormitory in the middle of the night. High part negotiations with the terrorists were deadlocked until October 13, 2016, when 21 of the girls were eventually released. This again rekindled hopes of a possible release of the remaining school girls. But the clamor for their freedom has continued to gather steam. The government wishes to inform the public that we will continue to identify and commiserate with the parents and relatives of the Chubo girls who are still in captivity while we work assiduously on the rehabilitation of, th of those who have been rescued. So far, out of the 276 abducted girls, 187 have been rescued and reunited with their families. Most of those rescued girls over the years have been enrolled in different schools and capacity building programs. I want us to remember that when these girls left, they were girls. They were basically children. They have come out as mothers with three, two, or even four children. So their status has changed tremendously. Their commitment, their understanding is different from what they were before they left. And as a result of that, the Borno State Government took over their rehabilitation, giving them mental health and psychosocial support. We had to stabilize them because when they came out, they were highly traumatized because of the uh, trouble they went through in the bush. Having done this assessment and in consultation with them and their parents, it was collectively agreed that they cannot go back to the normal school, that is secondary school or women teachers college. And so fortunately for us, the Borno State Government has what we call the second chance school. It's a complete, a holistic school that gives both vocational uh, and other services, including computer literacy, numerical uh, lessons, and what have you. And so presently, these girls are attending the second chance school. Uh, like Amina Ali is one of the lucky school girls released by Boko Haram. She shares her experience. I'm the one who first girl escaped from the captivities with a baby girl. Uh, she's three months and three weeks. So I escaped in year 2016. So I just did two years and months in the captivities. The only thing I can remember in 2014, we are all in school writing our first SSC examination before Boko Haram come and adopt us and move with us to the Sambisa forest. So that's where they keep us there in the bush. Before 2014, uh, to, we don't even think that they will come to Chibok at that time. So we are living happily. We don't think about such thing could happen in Chibok at that time until 14 April. The abduction of the Chibok school girls is an event that will remain a reminder of the dark days of the Boko Haram insurgency in Borno State and the northeast region of Nigeria.
Concerned citizens want the Nigerian authorities to live up to their pledge of protecting the people and double up efforts to provide a safe learning environment for children across the country. Jesse Tofida, TVC News, Maiduguri. Here in Lagos, the Bring Back Our Girls movement is calling on government to expedite action in ensuring the release of about 90 Chibok school girls still in captivity 10 years after. TVC News senior reporter Yofilo Selama has more. In the wee hours of the 14th of April 2014, Boko Haram seized over 250 schoolgirls from their dormitories in Government's Girls Secondary School, Chibok local government area of Bronu State. While 128 regained freedom in batches over nine years, the whereabouts of 91 others remain unknown. The abduction sparked global outrage and took the headlines. It also birthed an international movement, Bring Back Our Girls. Now, 10 years later, 91 girls are yet to regain freedom as civil society organizations are raising their voices to remind the government of its promise. Over the last 10 years, about 1.5 billion naira has been allocated to the Chibok girls. We've asked the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs twice with a freedom of information request, and they've not responded either time. So the point is, if you're really engaged and concerned about the girls, if anybody is asking about the welfare of the girls, you should be willing um, to provide information. It's not easy to stay with, without my daughter for good three years. Remember, for the age of us are late. And most of them that are late, due to trauma, heartbreaking, high blood pressure, you know, not all of us can eat all. Mothers, fathers, and friends of the Chiba community all gathered here to make a case for the release of the girls. One of the Chibok girls who was held in captivity while narrating our ordeal sent a message of hope to others still held. Okay, my message to them, to those that are still in captivity is now, they should just be strong. I know they are not finding it easy. Life is so hard for them. They are going through a lot. But they should just hold on. Nigeria needs a missing persons register. We've only been able to advocate for the Chibok girls, talk about 91, 112, because we had their names. At least 38 school abductions have happened. There's no documentation of that anywhere. Even this one, the government has never produced the list. Like many others who have escaped harrowing conditions in Boko Haram hideouts, these girls turned women now face a different type of challenge, the struggle to restart their lives when so much has changed. It is hoped that governments will re-strategize and see the rescue of those still in the terrorist den. Theophilus Elama, TVC News, Lagos. Away from that, but still in Lagos, where residents of Egon Riomi are calling on Governor Babadide Sonwolu to come to their aid to resolve the kingship tussle in the area. This is after the conflict claimed the life of a 14-month-old baby. Senior correspondent Ivy Kano reports. Egon Riomi is a riverine community located at Oto, a worry local council development area of Ojo. Our crew had to take a boat to where the crisis happened. Houses burnt, shops boggled and touched. 80-year-old man wasn't spared as he was macheted by the night invaders. 14 months old boy burnt to death. That's the story of this community. The traditional ruler's palace wasn't spared either. They come from Shagira, Esofi, Ego. They come to Ego to come and kill everybody. They kill one boy, burn him in the, in the room. Let government come and help us in this village. The problem of this village is over Tosus. They are, they want. They want another person to come and be our king. Why we have king here? So you must have the other Friday. But she is not here. She to ten to see the enemy. As the Lord will not part your power. As the Lord will not fall. The Lord will not see God come to us. I want wait to see God come to us. I want to see the Lord So when the Oma go in front of the Oma go cool and be. You must have the resort in front of the Oma. You must have 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 the Oma. 
they are the cause of all this problem. They brought talks to come and kill everybody here. With hope that Kabye Seoba Moshid Dolani Waju was around that very good that very Friday. That so that maybe they should kill him, burnt everywhere. They will come and take over all this place. Life for me. Oh, Family of the 14 months old boy say he didn't need to die for a cause he knew nothing about. Mbati mafi wale pada. Mwipe ko si anwen yom ni inule ye mwa. Onde ti fino si inule ye. So daddy mi wa. Be misha pada ri daddy mi. Mwa sa mwipe mwipe yom mwami wa ni inule ti mwa fino ye. Se kwa mwami wa mi daddy mi wa sa re lo si pe kwe ka on lo rescue. Omonye. Mbati daddy mi be fi debe ba yon ko besini sha daddy mi mwa. The next mwa sa re lo kwe lo sa re lo rescue yom mwa it appears that the only solution is for those in authority to provide a boat to make security operations easier. From the information we got here, on that Friday night that the crisis was taking place, the residents tried reaching out to the police, but unfortunately, police couldn't come over since the boat services were not on at that time of the night. Uh, but they also 